Hello, I'm Jack Grady, and on behalf of the Archives and History Committee of the First Baptist Church on the Square in LaGrange, Georgia, we welcome World War II veteran Alan Perdue, and we thank him for his service to our country and to our church. Alan, thank you so much for your willingness to come and, and visit here. with us today. Talk a little bit about your World War II uh, experience. I know that you could spend hours discussing it. We're just going to kind of hit the highlights. Memories that you have from, gee whiz, this is May the 9th, 2012. So World War II began a little over 70 years ago, didn't it? But I know you have some vivid memories of your experience. And we just want to sit and talk a little bit about it today. Uh, first of all, uh, tell me a little bit about your enlistment process. Were you drafted or did you volunteer? I vol <coughs> volunteered. Volunteered. And volunteered in what branch of service? The Army. You went in the Army. And when was this, Alan? 1943. 1943. Was it just after you finished school, or was it uh, during the early part of the year? Well, I was uh, 17 years old. Okay. So, and uh, my mother and daddy had died within a year of one another, and so I felt like that I need to uh, do what I could for my country, and also I thought it would be the best thing I could do at that time. Well, that's a, that's a wonderful attitude, and I'm, I appreciate you saying it that way. Um, it was admirable of you to, to want to, I know it wasn't easy to leave home at that particular time, but I, it was certainly you had a, a motivation that, that is most uh, appreciated. Serve your country. Well, and you were just 17 when when you volunteered right. in the U.S. Army. Uh, well, tell me, did, did you, uh, with a group, were you with a group here in LaGrange that, that volunteered or showed up at the recruiting center? <clears throat> uh, just myself and my nephew, he, he was drafted. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I volunteered. And decided you'd go with him. Yeah, and we, we signed up here in LaGrange and then we went to Atlanta for processing. They processed you through the physicals and all of that That's preparation right. and so on. That's right. And, and the main thing was we told them uh, what we both wanted to do. They asked you what your preference is in the Army. We both told them we wanted to, the same thing I got what I asked for, he didn't. Mm -hmm. So they sent me to Fort Lewis, Washington from Atlanta. Fort Lewis, Washington. Washington, Atlanta. Washington State. Washington State. That's a fur piece, that's a long way. Yeah, it was, they put us on the train one evening about sundown, and five nights and four days later we arrived in Tacoma, Washington, and they hadn't told us at that time where we were going, what we, uh, what we were going to be attached to. You had no idea where you were headed. Nothing but rumors. And we Lots of rumors floating. A lot of I rumors, bet. all of them on that. Knew where we were going, but, but we didn't know where we were going. Yeah, they were just guessing. Right. But that was a long trip. It was Four a long nights trip. and five days right. on the train, the troop train. Right. Yeah. Well, that, that's real interesting. And you ended up at Fort Lewis, Fort Washington, Lewis, Washington State. Mm -hmm. It's uh, <clears throat> 15 miles from Tacoma and about 30 miles from uh, Seattle. I see. Seattle, Washington. Right. Big city, beautiful place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was something amazing to me because, I mean, if you don't come off the farm in the country and hadn't been much further than the range, it was Really a sight to see. So you, you really did join the Army to see the world, and <laughs> so well, to speak. I, I got to, that much to see. <laughs> a lot of the United States. I didn't know I was going to see it. You saw a lot of the United States. Okay, 
Well, uh, so you got to Fort Lewis, and you were assigned to a unit or an outfit. Uh, I don't know exactly the terminology because I was in the Navy, but uh, you were. what were you assigned to? Well, of course, in basic training, you, you're not really assigned at that point, are you? Well, <clears throat> uh, yes, you know, you have to take your... Uh, your uh, IQ test and, all that, and two more tests. One of them was the officer's training uh, test. Officer's training? I mean, you know, off, you get the old officer's training school. You mm. know, if you made it with a certain point. Well, I failed that one. But uh, other than that, you know, I was in the Armored Division. Armored? You were. Armored Division. And uh, was that like tanks and so on? Tanks and you were assigned stuff. to an armored division, tank yeah. division. Well, they well, called it armored division, yeah. but anyway, okay. it was tanks, trucks, and jeeps and stuff oh, like okay. that. And uh, <clears throat> so we formed a battalion called 737 Tank Battalion. 737th. Tank Battalion. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you were a part of that. Right. All right. And then uh, tell me a little bit about your basic training experience. Well, you being an old neighbor man, you know a little bit about what's going on on your end of it was. But uh, it was kind of, they put you kind of through a uh, training period that was basically something similar where if you went overseas and faced the enemy, you would know what it was all about. You were prepared. Right. They were preparing you for that. Right. Now, that, this was in 1943, I believe. Right. So it was at the height of the war. It was going on all over the world. And you were preparing to be a part of that combat. Yeah. So just mention a few things in your basic training experience that you remember about. Uh, well, maybe you'd like to forget some of them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, you know, we had that obstacle course, they called it. Oh, which the was made, obstacle course, yes. Right, which was made up of several different things was in, that, in, yeah. in that obstacle course. Yes. Like one thing was that you had a wall built out of uh, pine, I mean, it was full up there, full of logs made up, but you had to climb that thing and jump off on the other side yeah. and sawdust and stuff like that. Yes. And then they had one that you had a rope swinging across water and they'd bring it over to you, hook it and bring it over to your side. Or, and you catch on it, the rope, and you sure better let go when you got on the other side, then you'd be pulled back out to that water. In the, in the middle of the pool. Then you'd have to drop in it. And um, then they had uh, this other thing that they put you through that really kind of shook my nerves up on it. Because I, from what they uh, said we had to do, they had a long ditch dug, and they made us get out in that ditch. And uh, they had machine guns sitting behind us. And they said they were shooting about three feet over us. They were shooting right above you? They said they were shooting right above me, yeah. Yeah. And uh, we had to stop their machine guns shooting, and they'd give us so many minutes to get out of that ditch and get on our stomach. Mm -hmm. And on this course that you had to go through, they had some wire that you had to encounter going through it, and also they had some holes doing that in different places wow. that you'd have to go around. And um, so you would go up to this wire instead of 
You weren't going to stand up because you just get that them machine gun. You weren't about to stand up, were you? No. So you kind of, they had taught you how to roll yourself through it mm. and not get up. Right. But it's, we laughed and told us when we, when we got over to the other side that we didn't want to paint off our helmets oh. <laughs> to keep them down. So, but to make a long story short, you'd go by one of these here holes. The first one I went by, they scared me to death. That thing exploded, blew deep up there, and it fell back on Well, they had some explosive in the bottom of that hole. Right, right. And, and then they ignited the explosive or whatever they did. and It did. It, it, it right, it fixed where right it blew by it. you. Yeah, it just go up and fall back on top. Again, though, they were preparing you for combat later. Right. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you know, it'd be basically something that you'd encounter when you got, sure. got in the real thing. Yes, yes. But uh, anyway, when you got on the other side, you know, you felt a whole lot better going down the ditch than you did coming out. <laughs> I'm sure you did. And there was other things too, but it's, as you know, there's a lot of things that you can tell that you had to do that, yes. that don't. I think that's the most important thing. You did obviously. some drilling during the day, I presume, you know, marching, and right. learning formation. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. uh, was there ever any conversation at that, at that stage about uh, the possibility of, of having to invade Japan? I know. I didn't hear you. Well, didn't that was in 1943, so it probably would not at that point. But of course, we. The war in the South Pacific uh, included some island invasions and all of that kind of thing. So that's, I'm sure they were preparing you for that. But the, you could have ended up in, in Europe as well, in North Africa or in Italy, some of those horrendous places where they had battles. And, and all of this would have been excellent preparation if you had ended up doing that. Okay, well, now so you come to the end of of their basic training experience, and that was how many weeks? Thirteen. Thirteen weeks of basic training. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then uh, what was your assignment at the conclusion? I was assigned to the motor pool. The as motor a, pool? Yeah, as a, they call them technicians. Okay, a as technician. They working on uh, vehicles, um, like tanks, Six for sixes, four for fours, trucks, and um, jeeps, command cars. You did it all. I mean, you were involved with all kinds of motorized uh, equipment, As, including well, tanks. You, you mentioned tanks. Yeah, they were certain. They was, they had certain things they call them echelons. Echelon. Yeah, I think it was from one to five. It's different echelons. Mm -hmm. Like they had said, they had uh, a person that did the, the uh, looking after the oil changes and lubes and stuff like that. And yeah. then they had different ones for the motors and they had different ones for the tune ups and stuff like that. But I was assigned to the ones that did the tune ups, pulling wheels off of the trucks and mm -hmm. packing wheel bearings and okay. all that kind of stuff like that. Yes. You didn't want to do a moment in it. Had to keep all of their motorized equipment uh, in good shape. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. those things went out there, they want to see them come back. Yes. Well, we're, there's no doubt as to what time it is. We hear our beautiful church bells today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're right in the middle of it, aren't we? Well, that's real interesting. Uh, did, did this in some manner prepare you for life after, where, after the military service? Well, I had always, I mean, I, I got old enough to get my driving license. I got an old car, and I always liked to work on it. You kept it running, huh? Yeah, I kept, kept it, it in good running. shape. Mm -hmm. And so I guess that was maybe the talent that God gave me that. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was picked 
from one of them tests. Did they, you know, they gave you a okay. test to see what you were best suited oh, okay. for. Okay, that's like an aptitude test right. or something of that nature. And, uh, so that's why I wound up in the motor group. I see. So they needed you there more than any other place, and right. you, as you stepped up to the task. Right. Okay. Uh, well, Alan. Uh, did you have any other responsibilities uh, while you were at uh, Fort Lewis uh, other than the motor pool? <clears throat> well, you know, uh, probably had back some... then you had, you had maybe, a, this was in the, I don't, I can't remember well. I did much of it after I was signed that, uh, but you know, you had, uh, walk guard at night. Oh, yeah. Okay. Around equipment and stuff. Mm -hmm. It was so often. You carry it, walk, had guard duty with a rifle on your shoulder? Well, all, all they ever issued to us in the, in the motor pool that worked on the uh, vehicles was a 45 pistol. Carried a pistol. Carried around you, and mm -hmm. also a 30 carabine rifle. I see. That's all they had. Do you ever have any? problems uh, when you were on guard duty? Nothing but one of the main things that I did when uh, I got back, back up in the woods where they kept the tanks and everything one night and uh, so I called the commander he come down and then I saw something coming with lights on it and you back up in the woods and everything and, about half skid, and so he come on down there, and he said, uh, got out, and I knew who he was. To challenge him? I, I, I stopped him, you know, yes. and I got exposed to him. Yes. And I was manual, you know, told you. And yes. One thing I didn't do, I, I made a mistake, was that he uh, come on and he talked to me a little while, he said, let me see your gun. I handed him a little rifle. Uh -huh. And he just kind of threw it back at me. Uh -huh. You know, and I caught it. He didn't hurt me. But yes. He says, don't it say in your manual that you don't let nobody have your gun? Mm -hmm. Nobody. Yes. I said, well, sir. I said, you're my commander. And I said, I thought I was supposed to give it to you. He said, I don't care who he is. I see. Well, so he was he checking said, you. He said, Manuel, don't tell you nobody did it. Mm -hmm. He said, don't let that happen no more. I said, yes, sir. <laughs> and so you did. I learned my lesson. <laughs> okay. Even if the general had come, you wouldn't have done it. No. Yeah. No more. That's interesting. Well, you get into all kinds of experiences, don't we? Yeah. And I guess you had a little KP along the way, too. Oh, buddy. yeah. I know how to watch these. Okay. Well, Alan? Um, would you say that the experience that you had on the, in the motor pool and the, doing all of this vehicular repair and so forth, keeping the, all the equipment in good running order, did that help you in later life in some, some way? Oh, yeah. When I, get, I came back out of service, uh, I went to Perry Business School on the GI Bill. Mm -hmm. The and GI Bill was helpful, wasn't it? Yes, yes, yeah. it was. Mm -hmm. And about, I went, I went half the course, and I seen I didn't like sitting behind no desk. That wasn't for me. Desk job was not for you. Okay. No. So I stopped that, and uh, then I went to work for Callaway Mills, yeah. And that wasn't for me either. Mm -hmm. And so I finally wound back up. I uh, had a friend who was in the Army with me, and he was service manager at the Oldsmobile place, and he asked me about coming in and working with him, so I did. So you had met him in basic training. Right. And he was involved. He was also good with mecha uh, right. mechanical things. Right. And he became the service manager. Right. And he lived here in the range. At the Oldsmobile. Dealer. Right. Mm. 
So, uh, so he hired you. He hired me. How about that? So I got back in the, what I like to do. Yes. And uh, then I was there probably, I don't know, I, I worked for him about six, eight months. And the job come over me at the uh, Buick place. Buick, here, Buick here in dealer, LaGrange. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so somebody told me about it. I need to go down and talk to Mr. Dolphin. And I did, and he hired me. Mm -hmm. So I was service manager him until he went out of business. And uh, so at that time, it so happened that the guy that was service manager for the Ford dealership, his wife worked for a telephone company, and she got transferred to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So, um, of course, he quit his job mm -hmm. at the Ford place. I see. So the, the manager of the Ford dealer down there heard that I was available. going to be available mm -hmm. pretty soon. Yeah. So he asked, sit and wait for me to come down there. I so see. I went down there. And so I moved right out of the Buick dealership, right in the Ford dealership. Mm -hmm. so you were much in demand. Well, just so happened, everything, the door just so yes. to the door. Well, speaking of uh, employment uh, possibilities and so on, uh, and the experiences that you had later on, uh, somewhere I heard that you also, for a number of years, worked uh, managing or taking care of the golf courses at Callaway Gardens. That's a big assignment. <clears throat> yeah, that was... Was that? that happened to me too, to another friend. He was okay. part salesman, and he mm -hmm. always called on me. Yes. So he came in there one day, and he said, "I found you another job." I said, "I'm not having another job." <laughs> he said, "Well, you're gonna like this one." I said, "What is it?" He said, "They need a man down at Callaway going. I said, "Man, I ain't never hit a golf ball." Mm -hmm. He said, "Well." He said, I told him you're coming down there Saturday morning. I said, I'm okay. Oh. He said, you're going to talk to him. Anyhow. I said, in other words, you ain't asking me, you tell me. He said, yeah. Anyway, he picked me up then and carried me down there and showed up. But the guy made the interest in what he offered me, so I changed my mind. Mm -hmm. I, I, of course, I went and understood with him. I said, now look, I said, I don't want to think about God. He says, okay, we'll, we'll fix that. So anyway, I left there and went to Callaway Gardens. And you worked with them how many years? Several, I know. Thirteen and a half. How many? Thirteen and a half. Thirteen and a half years, yeah. I was supervisor on one of the golf courses. Supervising the golf course. Well, that's, well you, you didn't have to worry about a desk job then, did you? you no, were, I didn't. You were out in the open. And that's right. Much of your time, anyway. Of course, you did some had some responsibility in the office, I know, too. Well, uh, let me ask you one other question. Uh, as you think back, you were, you were first assigned at, at the basic training, the 737th Tank Battalion. Right. And you had associates, friends, buddies who were part of that outfit. Right. Uh, and then when they finished basic training, that unit, I guess, that battalion that you said was formed for that group, they shipped out somewhere. Where did they go? Did you, did you ever know? No, I never did know where never they, didn't they know. went. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Could have been in Europe somewhere or with tanks and so on. Well, like I, I'm, I'm sure they stayed with the, the armored division. Armored division. It, it was, you know, but... Like with uh, Patton, General Patton. <clears throat> yeah, General Patton. He, by the way, he came in over there from uh, Grayfield one day, hmm. flew in over there, and he got up on the back of a truck, and he, they had us all over there listening to him. And you heard he wore, wore two guns. Yes. You know, and he had it on. He did. He had yeah. both of them. Had had you know, okay. All he, right. he, he was he, he was like he was, you know. Yeah. And he got up there and he uh, was telling us, you know, how uh, important your job was. Well, man. that and another thing is, he also stressed to the uh, commanders and everything 
He said, I want you to, any time you can give these boys a pass, that you don't need them here on the weekend, he said, give it to them. Because he says, when they get over there, I said, I tell you right now, he right. said, it's going to be pure bad. Yeah. <laughs> sure. So, uh, he was, he just he was laid likable to just hear him talk and look yeah. at. Oh, I bet. And I heard that they said that he never did ask one of his men to do nothing. He wouldn't do it mm -hmm. himself. So he, he was saying, be, get yourself prepared. Uh, if you've got some time off, take it now, but you're not going to get any later because we've we got well, a job to do. He, from what they say, he got the job and done, he, too. He did. He really did. That's, that's great. Well, that's interesting. Well, Alan, anything else you would, would like to share with us? Well, I, I don't know that I can think of right now. There's a lot of things, Jack, but it takes too much time. Well, <laughs> but, uh, okay. Anyway, I, I'd just like to say this, that I, <clears throat> I, really, I, I really like Washington, but I like Georgia the best. Oh, okay. All right. So you came back for a homecoming. Right. And we're glad to be here. Yes, it is. And we're glad you're here. Well, and we appreciate, we appreciate what you do in our church and your involvement in our Sunday school programs and so forth. And, Merrymakers and all of the things that we do here. Well, I'll tell you what, I, everybody that I've met here in this church and everything, I think the world of you. And uh, I think we have a really close knit Sunday school class yes. and fellowship with one another. It's just yeah. like when I was in service, didn't have to get out of there, them guys that I'd been around so long and all, and we were just like close to really than my, I had been my own brother. And uh, so that's, that's the way I feel here. Yeah, you appreciate the camaraderie with, with that group and them. Right. You feel the same kind of fellowship here, fellowship mm -hmm. spirit. And you, uh, I appreciate you doing this, Jack. You do about a lot for this church, and I know everybody appreciate you and you always do a good job because well, it's the second time you've interviewed me so i think i think we have to stop this interview now because we, <laughs> we're not talking about world war ii and that's what we're here to do okay no if i'm i'm just kidding but i appreciate your sentiment thank you uh i think i had mentioned to you that our friend paul barnes is doing the actual recording and paul is uh making a couple of copies of this recording, this interview, uh, for use by the Archives and History Committee. But uh, when he gets through with the whole process, uh, he will also have a copy for you. So there's something that you can keep and look back on if you, would, if you wish and share it with your family. But thank you so much for your willingness to do this. Thank you, yeah. Jack, and thank you, Paul, if you can hear me. Okay.